This is Twit. I do want to talk about GPUs because, you know, they spend a lot of time talking about how great these GPUs are compared even uh, the to the Radeons that they put in the top of the line Mac Pros. Notice there was no NVIDIA mention at all. <laughs> yep. Um, and Alex, you're the you know I always go to you to ask you about this because you, you're the pro user, you're the high end user, you understand what pros want, and of course you had 150 people in office hours watching this together. What was the reaction? What is the feeling about the uh, GPUs? People are pretty excited, <laughs> you yeah. know, to say the least. You know, I think that so that not everything is the GPU. A lot of it is the processing, the number of processors, and how they handle it, and how they whether they can do it in parallel, and and so on and so forth. But um, on the other side of that, uh, RAM is a big deal. And here's why RAM is a big deal. is because it means you can hold larger texture maps and you can hold larger models in the RAM while you're processing. So by having more, more memory available to the GPU, it means that those you have much, much larger um, texture maps. That, that means that everything looks higher resolution than it did before. Um, so it may not, it, again, it may not be able to process as fast sometimes. It, it, so that might affect uh, do, handle effects and so on and so forth. But the amount of, of raw amount of uh, resources. So I can have 4K texture maps instead of 2K texture maps or 8K texture maps instead of 4K. You know, those kinds of things. I can start throwing much, much larger imagery and much, much larger models. It also means... Um, um, I can do things like oversampling. So oversampling is, I know you need a 4K image, but I'm going to render a 16K image, and then I'm going to bring it back down to four. And what that does is it handles all the little aliasing, all the little jagged edges along the edge of the model. And so those are the kind of things that you can do when you have a lot of RAM. 128 gigs on the Ultra. Um, Boom. No, I don't like, think that, I mean, that's only the incredible. very highest end GPUs would have anything near that kind of. I've never seen a GPU with that much no. RAM. Okay. I think it's 48. I think 48 yeah. is the most I've ever yeah. seen. Right. But it's different. Again, this is a different architecture because you now have, rarely do both the GPU and the CPU need all that RAM at one time. It's usually, it's oftentimes left kind of latent. So right. being able to share the, the shared memory architecture is incredibly important in this process. 800 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth. Is that a good number? It's fast. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I actually, I don't have a reference point for that. I, it's really it's fast. I, I, it's, I don't, I don't know what the, I don't know what my current one is. I don't know what yeah, those yeah, ones are. Yeah. That's not, that's not a number I know. Yeah. 60 up to 64 core GPU. Um, but no, they're not CUDA cores. You don't get ray tra hardware ray tracing. Um, there are people who need that kind of stuff, right? And you don't not get Unreal many. Engine. <laughs> Like not not too many like like the ray tracing thing is cool, but it's not like you know I did uh, anyway. It's I did for the gaming. I did a, it's I did very... a big shiner ship. I did a big shiny ship for a for a space film without ray tracing. Without ray tracing. So, <laughs> so I, I kind of yeah. look at it like oh, yeah. yeah, but that was a long time. It's, ago. It, it looks great, but the, what's more interesting is when when they start saying we can handle global illumination or physically based rendering in real time or something like that. Now you have my attention. Ray tracing is 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 hard, and I'm glad that they're able to do it. But it's the it's the global illumination stuff that is going to require a lot of RAM, <laughs> right? You know, to figure out, right? So. And you can do ray tracing in software. And it, in fact, somebody's saying, uh, uh, Dwindle's saying his Blender cycle render does a pretty good job on the M1 mm -hmm. Max, but it's still faster on my 2080 Ti. Maybe, but now let's see what the Ultra. And it'll be uh, interesting. I mean, I'm less inter I'm less worried about real time and more because you can get there's not many games or even anything real time that really takes advantage of most of these most of this hardware. What I'm really interested in is to see how does Cinema 4D, right? You know, do this. How does motion handle this? How does you know those types of things, you know, handle the processors yeah. that are there? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And it's it, it's sad to say, but it's the case that um, Mac is not a gaming platform. And yeah, I mean, there's it's 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 a nice footnote to talk about. But the thing is, anybody who wants it, casual gamers have their needs well covered by other Apple products. People who are very very serious gamers who are going to be bemoan the fact that ooh, 60 hertz that's not a, that's a, that's a terrible limit. They're all they're they're not going to be interested in Macs to begin with for reasons that go beyond. Uh, having an M1 uh, M1 Ultra processor in there, so I don't think that's a that's yeah. a big deal. I, th I, th I think that what they're I, I'm I'm just saying I think I think that the the needs for the studio were uh, 
that really huge, rich vein of customers between entry level basic productivity Macs and super, super graphic chunking, number chunking uh, Mac Pros. We're talking about like the people who are creating videos on YouTube, make who have their own studio, like uh, uh, producing digital videos, who need that kind of power, but don't necessarily need to spend uh, need the kind of power they need to spend six thousand dollars for it. And I think that this is where they've they've aimed these two uh, processors and these the versions of the studio and there's a, apple could become a big player in real-time games because i think that there's a real blind spot in the gaming community which is they don't really have a broadcastable solution they have a, a solution that gamers like to watch and they can fill the stadium once every once in a while with the gamers but they're, they're not really hitting the mark on building a truly broadcastable game and until someone does that, Apple Apple could, you know, step into that market pretty hard, you know, and that's a, you know, an integrated game that scales to all the way down to your iPhone and, and Apple TV and all the way up to a Mac Pro and um, broadcasts and is able to broadcast. And then you throw a $10 million pot into it for the winner. <laughs> Things get <laughs> yeah. real inter interesting real quick, you know, like, you know, and that's the, and that, so Apple could. I'd love to see that, that if they frankly. got, yeah. but they have to backfill all the hardware first. So I think that the, the, this could be something they did in a year or two after they have all of the stuff rolled out. Yeah. I, I think that we're looking at, I think they gave us a, a very clear map today of where their interests are in that kind of content. They, uh, they We did gloss over uh, the Apple TV Plus uh, section because it was meant to be because we were sort of yawning. Glossed over. <laughs> well, well, also, we're, we're, you know, but, al but also, one thing that really, really struck me was that I they it didn't just. My eyes were closed. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but the, well, well, if your eyes were open <laughs> uh, and you were taking notes like I was, uh, like we were used to saying, uh, uh, oh, look how, look how popular. Ted Lasso is Ted Lasso, Ted Lasso, Ted Lasso, whatever the lowest latest hit is. They really, really. I, I, I was, I was prepared to simply, oh great, I get I, uh, in this section. I've got of uh, this montage of what they're doing with Apple TV content. I get to spend the next. I, I, I didn't think that I could, I'd have time to move this streaming window to this other display. Now I have time to don't, don't to take notes. But man, they really did a good job of cutting together a montage of content that shows this is not just hey look we we hired some people who used to be on Friends to do like a an Andy's. Uh, to do a, a Sorkin style TV drama. It's like, no, they said, we have, here's the children's programming. Here are the people we hired away from Pixar. Here are super, super high named actors that we have in serious dramas. Here are comedies that we're doing. Here are, they really are flexing the idea that they're creating themselves as a real studio. And uh, it, it demonstrates that if they wanted to be, a, I think that if they wanted to be a game studio like that, they certainly could be doing that, but they apparent, I don't think that they want to. They're putting their money exactly where they want to go and as far as uh graphics performance i think that they're also saying that uh we are we feel that it's most important to uh, we, we want to make sure the content creators with our desktops have the tools they need to create the content that's going to be used uh, that's going to be targeted at our devices but i think that the future of the company is more leaning towards making sure that your handheld device has enough power to run this content. Your wearable, future wearable device has enough uh, right. CPU, GPU power to run this sort of stuff. I, th I think that they made a lot of their intentions known just below the surface of most of the announcements they made today. Yeah.